About a month ago, I did a review of Homeseer using a Home Troller Plus, which is a Windows device running the HS4 software. In that video, I mentioned that the Home Troller Pi, which is a Raspberry Pi device, is the best value for Z-Wave users because it comes with a built-in Z-Wave antenna. I got a lot of questions about the setup and performance of the Pi versus the Plus that I couldn't answer because I didn't have a Pi. Well, Homeseer was kind enough to send me a Home Troller Pi to make this tutorial. Over the next two videos, I'm going to show you the exact steps that I used to create a testing scenario using three Z-Wave devices and six Insteon devices. This video contains all the details you'll need to set up your Home Troller Pi, add your Z-Wave devices, and configure them in different kinds of events. Alright, all I did was plug in the network cable. That is Ethernet connected to my router, and I am going to plug in the uh, Home Seer Home Troller Pi for the first time. Alrighty. That's plugged in. See a little bit of a light on the inside. I don't know if that's a. It looks like a hole. It's not necessarily a light. Ah, it is a light. Look at that. Okay, I now have a green light on the Home Troller Pi, and I went to find.homeseer.com, and it comes up with, I have two systems. This was the, the Plus, Home Troller Plus, that I was using before for a previous video. That one is now unplugged. I don't know why it still shows up here, but you can see here's the Home Troller Pi. So I'm going to click that, and... The first thing it does is ask me for my license ID and password, which I find on the bottom of the unit. Okay, at this point it's asking me for a username and password to put in. So I'm just going to put in Chris. And then I'm going to create my controller system password. I'm not going to require a login from the home network, and I want Fahrenheit. I am going to set my location. Uh, New Jersey Trenton is close enough to me. And that's that. Now, do I have a MyHS account? I do, but I'm going to say no at this point. And I'm going to say no to creating one. And I can do that later. I'm done. Okay, so at this point, the Home Troller is totally local in my network. I am not connected to, I'm not dependent on any servers. It is connected to the internet, but I'm not dependent on any servers. And I don't know what, uh, I guess it created these two virtual devices, which I am just going to go into and delete. Okay, so it starts out with no devices whatsoever. And this one, because it has a Z-Wave antenna built into it, it already has the Z-Wave plugin here. And if I go into Manage Interfaces, I do see the built-in interface that it comes with and it says it is enabled. Now the first thing I can do is start adding my Z-Wave devices. Now when I go to add a Z-Wave device, it puts the Z-Wave antenna into what they call inclusion mode. And then from here, I will go and turn on my light bulb. Now I have a Z-Wave bulb in that light fixture there. And all I have to do is this, turn on the power, and it should start blinking. And then it says it is activated. I'm gonna give the device a name. I'm gonna call this my loft bulb. I have to choose a floor. There is no floor. So I'm gonna just do this. I'm gonna call it Z-Wave. And for the room, I'm just gonna call it loft. Continue. Finish. I click on, and the bulb goes on, and then I click off, and it goes off slowly. I don't know why, but that's just the way these bulbs are. Okay, I'm going to add one more bulb, and I'm going to call this one my hall bulb. Now, the next thing I want to do is create two events that turn these bulbs on and off automatically. And I need to create a group here, so I'm going to call this Schedules. And you can see from the previous time that I was using this interface, which was on my previous Home Seer device, it's interesting that it remembers all those, those things. Anyway, I have a group called Schedules, and I, 
creates a new event for me automatically. I'm going to change the name of this event. I'm going to call this dusk. I'm going to say if the time is before sunset. And I want it to be 30 minutes before sunset. Click save. So if the time is 30 minutes before sunset, then choose this action. I'm going to control a device. I'm going to turn my hall bulb on, and then I'm going to turn on the loft bulb too. That's it. Now I'm going to go back to schedules and I'm going to click plus for a new event. I'm going to name this event 1030 PM. So I'm going to say if the time is a specific number 1030 PM, then I'm going to control a device. Turn the hall bulb off and turn the loft bulb off. No, oh, it didn't take the time. Let me set the time again. Okay, there it is. If the time is 10.30 p.m., then turn both of those bulbs off. And what these two schedules do is they make my house look lived in, even if I'm not home. And I can add as many devices to those as I need to. If I want to, I can. Now let's talk about being able to control them from a switch. Now I have this device here. This is called a wall moat. I've had it for quite a while. It's really good for testing purposes. I don't actually use it actively in my house, but it's perfect for testing. It has four different quadrants on it, and those are basically four different switches. All I have to do is touch them. Of course, it's not set up at the moment, so it's not doing anything. So I want to now activate this or include it into my Z-Wave network. Now the way that I do that is I'm going to come over to my Z-Wave plugin, and I'm going to say add device, click start, now, to put this into inclusion, you just push this little button on the back here. And then it'll blink, and it says it's included. All right, now I have to just say where it is. Uh, first of all, I'm going to say it's a Z-Wave, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create a room called Office, because that's where I keep it usually. Name is Aotech Walmart. Continue, and I'm finished. Now you can see here, I have four buttons on there, and those buttons translate to the quadrants. So if I click button one, the light one goes on. And that's it. Now, what I want to do is I want to configure button one so it controls my hall bulb, and button two so it controls the loft bulb. And then button three will control both of them. Okay, now I'm going to come into events, and I'm going to click New Group, and I'm going to create a group called Walmart. And that always creates a default event, but I'm going to rename it. I want to call this Button 1 On. And I want to say if a device changes. Now, I don't know why, but for whatever reason, I have to put in the value of 99, because that's actually what the value turns out to be when it goes on. When it hits 99, I'm going to turn on my hall bulb. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click Copy Event, and I'm gonna rename this to Off. I'm gonna change the value to zero. So that's when it goes off. And I'm gonna change this to Off. Now I've got my two scripts that when I turn on, button one, and we can do that from here. I'm gonna click button one, and you see button one goes on, and the hall bulb goes on too. I'm going to click button one again, and they both go off. Okay, here I've duplicated the button one on uh, event, and I changed that to be light two and my loft bulb. And finally, I have button two off as well. So if I look at these, now I have four events here under my Walmart group. And now I can go back to my devices. And if I click button one, you can see the hall bulb goes on, button two, the loft bulb goes on, and then I can put them both off. I'm gonna create one more. I'm gonna duplicate button two, and I'm gonna say button three on. And for this one, I'm gonna turn both bulbs on. Now you can add multiple bulbs right here under this, then you can add multiple devices and actions, or controls I should say. And you can also add them like this. Click the plus and add an action. 
and this would be the whole bulb. Now, I've done it both ways, and I really don't see much of a difference. I do think this way takes a little bit longer. If you're doing the same type of thing where you're just setting devices on or off or dim levels or whatever, I think it makes more sense. It's more efficient to just do it in one command because it does allow a group. So I'm going to just put the whole bulb in here instead. And I'm going to get rid of this second condition. Now I'm going to duplicate that and create a button three off. All right, here I've got all three of my events created. Now I'm gonna go back to my devices. And if I just click one button, which is button three, both bulbs go on at the same time. Click them again, and it should put both bulbs off at the same time. So that's how you control things with controllers. You could use any kind of device that triggers any kind of an event. So for example, you can have leak sensors, you can have motion sensors, you can have door contacts or window contacts, anything like that, and trigger lights to happen whenever you want them to happen. There is one more thing that I can show you, and there's an interesting feature of HomeSeer that if I want button four to work a specific device and just I don't need events I don't need anything else going on it's not timed it's just I click this button and I want that light to go on I can create a linked device here I can enter or specify which of these bulbs I'm going to change it to my hall bulb and when I save this it just creates a link between the two of them and that means when I press button 4 the hall bulb goes on. Now let's just say I wanted button four to control both of these bulbs. Well, what can I do then? Well, then what I can do is either create an event like I did before, or if you always want them to go on together, you can do the same thing with the hall bulb and you can link that to the loft bulb. Now, if I click save on that, you're gonna see if I click button four, both of them go on. But similarly, if I press button one, which only controls my hall bulb, it puts on both bulbs as well because there's a link between those two bulbs. Now, the funny thing is I can still control my loft bulb because I'll press button two here. The loft bulb goes on by itself because it doesn't have a link. The hall bulb is the one, so the controlling one is the one that has the link. So I'm actually going to come in here and I'm going to take this out. Links, I think, you know what? I think they're good, but they are a bit confusing because if you don't know that it's there, you don't know where to look. So if something's not working the way you think it should, or if you're not around and somebody else is trying to troubleshoot something in your system, they're going to, of course, turn right to events and they're going to try and figure it out. They're not going to know that, oh, this link exists. It's kind of like a little... I don't know. I'm not really crazy about it. So I'm going to go in and I, I don't use links. I don't see that there's any real advantage there other than, you know, if you do have situations where a single device controls a single device, then you can use them. But otherwise, I'm not, I'm not really a big fan. I would rather them all be, you know, events triggered by something and there's a specific action button one on. Anybody coming in here and looking at these can tell exactly what that means, right? So I'm not really a fan of links. Okay, I have no camera set up, so I don't even know what that looks like. I can't help you there. There's also the setup tab here, which has a whole bunch of other things underneath it. And there's also tools which because I'm on the Pi, that is the Linux operating system that runs on the Raspberry Pi. And so there are some new Linux commands here. These actually can shut down Home, home Seer, shut down the entire system. So like if you wanted to move the device, you can shut that down or you can click restart. And if you restart, it starts, it restarts everything. So there are certain times that you may have to restart something, but it's very rare. 
you can also back up your database if you want to. And another useful feature is the log. This is where I could tell what the values were of my devices. Like for example, I had the, where do I have it? You can see that the loft bulb went to on and it's 99. So that's how I knew zero was off and 99 was on. I could see it right here. So this is a useful tool for troubleshooting. You can see this was when I first set it up and I put in my license, defined everything. So depending upon what the event is, the colors will change, warnings or errors, or just chatter. And you can uh, filter them as well. Now HomeSeer is a framework, let's put it that way. It's, it's a general framework that doesn't really know how to communicate with any kind of device. It relies on plugins. And you can see here, it's got a Z-Wave plugin built into it. And that's what comes with the Pi. And you can see Z-Wave is included here and it's just got, you know, some of these device menu underneath this uh, Z-Wave interface. Now, I can disable the plugin, I can delete the plugin, but I'm also, this is, this is the manage plugins screen. I can also go to the add plugin screen and that enables me to pick any other kind of device that I want to use. So if I've got LifeX, I can use that. I've got a Rachio. I could in, I could install this Rachio plugin. Uh, you can have Sonos, Wemo, Toya. And the reason why I got involved with HomeSeer originally was because of Insteon. So what I'm going to do in my next video is I'm actually going to show how I set up this MNS Insteon plugin and how I define my devices with that. But that is going to take up a whole separate video, but I will go into that at another time. But uh, just know that all these plugins know how to communicate with different types of devices. And that's one of the best things about HomeSeer is that no matter what the future holds, they will develop a plugin for whatever the future of, of home automation is. Whatever standard comes out next, they'll develop a plugin. And I know the investment in HomeSeer is one that'll continue to be used long into the future. If you're still on the fence whether to get a Pi or a Plus, let me take a moment to give you my thoughts. If you look at the two side by side, the first thing you'll notice is the price. Right out of the gate, the Plus costs $200 more than the Pi. But remember, the Pi includes a Z-Wave antenna. If you want to do Z-Wave with the Plus, plan to spend an extra $35 to $50 for a Z-Wave dongle. They both include HS4 software that I can attest functions exactly the same on both devices. They support the same plugins and have the same external capabilities through a MyHS account. I didn't have any cameras in my testing, but the specs say the Home Troller Plus includes high performance camera management, so I would expect that to be better if you have cameras. The CPU is certainly faster on the Plus than on the Pi, but it really wasn't noticeable from the user interface. The cool thing about the Plus is that it's a fully functional Windows desktop. Just hook up a mouse, keyboard, and monitor, and you've got an inexpensive computer that can be used for other things. Now Windows is certainly more bloated than Linux, so it makes sense that the Plus comes with more RAM and storage than the Pi. But in no way did I run out of space on either device in my testing. Bottom line, if you're intending to use Z-Wave without cameras and don't care about using the device for anything else, I think the Home Troller Pi is an unbeatable value. Leave a comment with your thoughts, and as always, please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next one.